on the show then. But she really loved this man, and he is one of my favorite actors, ladies and gentlemen. The star, currently of Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, Raul Esparza. She was singing the song, So What? And I uh, was in the middle of the song, and I guess she thought this was a good time to end it. So she ended it, so okay, so what? About three verses before it was actually over. <laughs> and then she realized what she had done, and kind of stepped back, and started it again. And treated the song like an encore. She just went right into it. Now, getting a Broadway orchestra to go back in reverse <laughs> is like starting a freight train. And so you heard this kind of, come on! <laughs> I didn't even notice. She was like, get it together, guys. And I just continued to say, you're a flaw from the audience. And I thought, that's a funny girl. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start with this little story about me, and, uh, and then um, you'll see why I'm telling you. About a decade ago, I was in a show uh, rehearsing for Broadway. We were already in the house, it was the final dress. Um, afternoon before final dress, actually. Lots of press in the back of the house. Now, this show was in trouble. The show was in really big trouble. It was, it was like arranging deck chairs on the Titanic trouble. Uh, we had a composer who had written a very good score, but he was an insane pop star. And we had a producer who was having a hard time. Now, let's say this producer's name might be Schmorzy O'Schmannel or something like that. Schmorzy had never produced a show on Broadway before. And Schmorzy loved to give opinions and tinker. So Schmorzy would come into the house and get on the God mic, which for those of you who work in the theater know that's absolutely verboten. Get on the God mic and just change numbers or cut scenes or um, actually get up on stage and restage choreography. Um, I'm not making any of this up and I wish we filmed it. Um, Schmorzy was not, not light on Schmorzy's feet. Um, and um, there was a day where, uh, that, that, this particular afternoon, uh, I couldn't make a costume change. It was a fabulous costume change uh, into a costume that Schmorzy's assistant had created. I was dressed sort of like uh, King George VIII. Um, we had, it hadn't been rigged, whatever. There was no Velcro in the costume uh, yet. We didn't make it. I was in a previous scene, blah, 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 blah. I come on stage. Schmorzy's upset. Uh, says you're cut from the previous scene. So I can make this costume change. I step forward bravely. Remember, there is press in the back of the house. And I say, I don't know what's the matter with you, lady. You're ruining the show. You keep cutting everything. It doesn't make any sense. Schmorzy says on the God mic, you may be right, and we can have this fight in the alley if you'd like, but your understudy can do it just as well as you can. And I said, Thank you very much. You've just given me a great gift. And uh, to quote Dick Cabot, you can take this show, fold it up five ways, and stick it where the moon don't shine. Yeah. So I walked off stage, and you should picture me walking off stage in a very flouncy uh, outfit with a cape, balloon pants, uh, fluffy slippers, and a long wig. OK, never to return. I go home uh, an hour later, I'm out of full beat makeup, and I'm sitting on my stoop having a cigarette, contemplating my future in Miami Dade Community Theater. <laughs> and um, our book writer comes out, and our book writer is a man of infinite patience and wisdom and wit and grace <coughs> and humor. And he, he comes up and I say, okay, I'm gonna send you. He says, I'm the only one they know you'll talk to. And I say, well, I still won't go back. I will not go back. He says, let's just get some lunch. So we go to Urban Walk. We sit down at Urban Dutrois, and we get martinis all around, midday, don't judge me. Um, we're sitting there drinking at the bar, and there's Paul. She's rehearsing uh, six dance lessons. She's having uh, a meal. She comes over, and I tell her the story about what happened. And Polly says to me something in that moment that I really believe saved my career. She said, you're a great actor, kid. I think maybe you might even be a star. She said, you deserve this, and you belong up there. And she said, 
Our reputations aren't made so much by what we do on stage, but by what people say about us. When people say things that may not be true. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. She told me a story about Marilyn Monroe at that point, but she said she wasn't as bad as all that. But it doesn't matter, because people only believe the stories that get repeated about these actors. She said, being talented is easy. Being a star is fleeting. And none of that matters, kid. Because being a good man is hard. So you better decide right now what kind of a man you want to be. So I, I, did, I did the show that night. I went back to work. That show got me my first Tony nomination. Whatever. I always felt that Polly, the most telling moment in her performance in Follies, was not so much the wish, the bravado with which she delivered, I'm still here, but the moment where it took a turn and she went to that dark place. She'd been there, but she also loved it. Polly saw everything I did. Polly would celebrate me in every show. I still have memories of sitting backstage laughing and getting half drunk at company, laughing and laughing. Just sheer joy together, and I couldn't believe that she treated me like I was her colleague. But she treated everybody like a colleague because we are all in the theater, in the film. We are all part of the same thing, and we are all one person. There's only one of us here, because we all go through it. The last time I saw Polly was um, after Leap of Faith, which, look, Jesus, what a career. Um, <laughs> another fiasco. And um, she had a, uh, she had come to the dressing room and it was really fantastic. And uh, the show closed in a mess. And I was in a lot, a lot of pain. And the first person on the phone to me was Polly. And she called me and said, motherfucking crazy kid. You're brilliant and don't you forget it. And even as I, as I tell you this story, I really feel like she did more than save my career that day. I feel like she saved my life. And I really miss her.